Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to go over the respiratory system. So we're going to look at uh, some of the uh, basic anatomy as well as some of the processes that occur. So the first thing that I uh, want to show you is what here is on the board. So what this represents is, so I'll draw this here. So this is the larynx. So you have the larynx, this is the trachea, and then these are the bronchi. So you have primary, so the branching of it, uh, once it branches, it becomes the next one. So it's primary here first, and then it's secondary, and then once it branches again, it becomes tertiary, and then these sacs here, this is known as the alveolar sac, so alveolar sac, and then each individual one, this is what's known as the alveoli. So when we talk about the respiratory system, we're talking about breathing, okay? So uh, some of that's the first process that we're going to discuss. So breathing, there's another term for it. It's called pulmonary ventilation. So pulmonary ventilation is just the act of breathing in your oxygen. So, so we breathe in oxygen and then we exhale CO2. So obviously it has to go through um, previous structures. So we'll talk about some of the different divisions. So the upper and then the components within the lower respiratory system. But if you think about it, so this here is the larynx and then this is the trachea, which it's branching here to get into the lungs. So each of these branches are found within these individual lobes. Um, so the first process, right, we already talked about it, it's breathing. So the next uh, process that we need to go over, so you have uh, pulmonary ventilation as well as external respiration. So external respiration, this occurs within the alveoli. Alveoli. And within the alveoli, this is where the capillary beds are. So capillary beds. So that's what this model is uh, representing here. So this, all of these, these are the individual alveoli and then this is the alveolar sac. And so you can see this is like the blown up part of it. These are all the capillary, the capillaries that are surrounding it. So the oxygen that we um, breathe in, this gets transported. So O2 and then also so I'm gonna draw this down here. So O2 and CO2, this is transported through red blood cells. So these red blood cells, they're gonna pick up the oxygen and then they're dumping off the CO2, right? Cause that's what we're gonna exhale. So this is for external uh, respiration. So the next thing we're gonna discuss is gas transport. So for gas transport, we are using the blood as a medium for this. So once these red blood cells, once they get the oxygen loaded, they're going to um, travel through the, obviously through the um, arteries, and then they'll get to the capillary beds. So once they get to the capillary beds, they're gonna dump off the oxygen and then pick up the CO2. So this is, so gas transport for blood, and then the next one, we're gonna talk about is internal respiration. So internal respiration, this includes picking up CO2 at the tissues. So right, CO2, we're picking this up at the tissues and this is a metabolic byproduct. And so do y'all remember one of the examples where CO2 is produced? I mean, we talk about metabolism. So Krebs cycle. So during the Krebs cycle, CO2 um, is produced. So we have to uh, get that to the alveoli so we can um, breathe it out. And then we're dropping off oxygen at the tissues. Okay, so these are some of the uh, basic processes that occur within the respiratory system. The next thing we're gonna go over is some of the 
uh, basic anatomy. Okay, so for the re upper respiratory system, this includes the nostrils all the way down until uh, we get to what's known as the pharynx. And a couple of the other uh, special features, so within, so this is the half head model. And one of the special features, so you have what's known as the concha. So you have the superior, middle, and inferior concha. And all of these, what they're functioning to is to increase the surface area. So we can get as much air into the trachea. Because once you get it into the trachea, right, then it can further get into the lungs. Okay, so we talked about uh, the concha, uh, the couple of the different uh, regions of the pharynx. So for the pharynx, you have the oropharynx. Or let me start at the top. So you have the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. Um, so all of these, so what's contained within the pharynx, first you have the immunity component, which is the tonsils. And then um, as you further go along, right, the laryngopharynx, that's what's going to lead to the esophagus. From the esophagus, that's what gets into the stomach. So this is for food, the food passageway. But then we also have to get the air, so air into the trachea but I'm not gonna write that here because this is for upper. So what's included for the lower respiratory system, it starts with the larynx and some of the special features of the larynx. <clears throat> so one of them is the epiglottis as well as, so the epiglottis as well as the vocal cords. So the epiglottis, this is what's uh, responsible, so this is like the gatekeeper. And then this is for voice production. So we call the epiglottis the gatekeeper because what it does, it folds back and it prevents food from getting into the trachea, right? Because we have to get it into the esophagus. Uh, so for that's for the lower respiratory. And then the next thing we're gonna go to, so you have the trachea. One of the special uh, features of the trachea, it's the epithelium, it's pseudostratified. So it's pseudostratified columnar and it's ciliated. So we talked about last semester how the, cilia, uh, the ciliary escalator, if there are debris, there's um, the mucus will get, will trap whatever the debris is and then we'll exhale it out, get it out of the trachea. Okay, so then from the trachea, it goes all the way down until we talked about the branching. So it goes from the bronchi, so primary, secondary, tertiary, and then it'll get into the bronchioles. So bronchioles are the smaller structures. And then eventually it leads to the individual alveoli. Once again, the alveoli, they contain the capillary beds. Okay, so talked about upper respiratory, some of the structures for the lower respiratory. So now we're gonna move on to the lungs and some of the features of the lungs. So for the right lungs, there are three lobes. So you have the superior lobe, you have the middle lobe, as well as the inferior. And they're divided into uh, different, what we call them, where they're known as fissures. So between the superior and the middle, so if we look here at the right lung, this one that's here at the top that's going in the transverse direction, we call it the horizontal fissure. And then the one that goes downwards in this direction, we call this the oblique fissure because it's at an angle. Okay, so this is for uh, the right lung, and then for the left lung, there's only two lobes. So you have a superior lobe, and then you have a inferior lobe, and both of these are separated by an oblique fissure. Uh, some of the special features of the left lung, it contains the cardiac notch, 
it also contains the aortic impression. So when y'all come to the lab next week, you're gonna identify all of the specific anatomy features. Uh, but just to show you on here, so this is the cardiac notch and then the aortic, or actually it's on this one. So this is the cardiac notch and then the aortic impression is here on this side. So then if you also look here on the inside of this, this particular region is known as the hilum. So within the hilum, this is what contains the pulmonary artery as well as the pulmonary veins. It also includes the branching of the primary bronchi. Okay. So that's going to do it for this lecture.